What does it actually take to succeed as a business owner, whether you're an online business owner, offering freelance services, or just have a traditional small business? What does it take? Well, you need to have trust. You need to take a leap of faith that it's all going to work out. You need to be authentic and actually show who you are as a human because it is way too easy to blend in now because a lot of people saying the same things, selling the same things. It's a very noisy market out there. And if you are staying neutral on everything or if you're hiding parts of yourself, you are going to blend in with the crowd and get drowned out. And most of all, you need to be trustworthy. People are not buying hype anymore, okay? We are in a time when people are burned out on undelivered promises, budgets are tighter, clients and customers are more discerning about where they spend their money and who they spend their money with. They look to you and your character to see if you're actually walking the talk. So easy enough, right? Just follow those steps, be trustworthy, be authentic, and you can build a successful business, right? Well, unfortunately, not really because there is a thousand and one business gurus out there telling you how to do those things and giving you strategies. Strategies like, you know, if you're a girl and you want to attract a following, you have to dress a certain way and, you know, have this influencer, perfect aesthetic lifestyle. If you're a dude, you have to be filming yourself in your garage with all of your cars and, you know, flexing on everybody. If you're in the online marketing space, if you want to sell maybe coaching or courses, you have to write things like 100,000 in just one week, like selling the dream marketing tactics. Well, who can we actually trust? in the online space. What principles do we look to in order to succeed as business owners? Well, today I'm going to share with you excerpts from scripture, specifically Ezra and Nehemiah, because as I was going through these books in the Bible, it was mind-blowing how many parallels there were to building a business. Nehemiah and Ezra were called to rebuild Jerusalem after Babylonian exile, and it was a huge task. It was super daunting. There was a ton of opposition against these two people, but how they conducted them themselves, made them go down in history. It made them complete their mission in as short a time as possible. They knew how to rally people. They knew how to push past opposition. And as I was reading these books in my morning quiet time, my mind was so renewed to tackle these business challenges with such vigor. Like knowing that all of this stuff that is coming against me right now, all of the obstacles, the negative thinking, the fact that all the answers on how to overcome that without getting discouraged and and losing heart, the fact that it's in scripture, is freaking mind-blowing. So this is going to be an incredible video where I share with you how we can take these principles and apply them to business. And definitely stay till the end because something I was always a little bit confused about as a newer Christian was how do I trust God and do the practical stuff to build a business while still leaving it in God's hand? I feel like that's a really weird balance to strike. And if you've been kind of confused about that too, like how do I step out in faith and know how much I need to really do and push and strive? This video is going to answer that for you. Okay, so principle number one is you need to walk the talk. Seek, do, and teach. As freelancers, as business owners, we have to constantly make the conversation around the results that we've gotten for other people instead of just being so focused on ourselves. One of the greatest books for this is How to Build a Story Brand by Donald Miller. It's basically how to make all of your marketing and messaging focused around the customer and making them the hero versus making it about you. Because as people, We really want to know what you can do for us versus just someone talking endlessly about how great they are. And if we are in roles of teaching, advising, consulting, mentoring, we need to make sure that we have gotten the results for ourselves and for others. It's why a lot of people won't trust a personal trainer that is overweight. The person you're buying from, you want to see that they're living out the values that they're preaching. It's why I think it's so ironic that college professors who have never actually gone out and entered the workforce they've literally just been in school over and over and over again to get all these degrees. Then they go and they become professors of business. It's like, but you've never built a business. So you're teaching from straight theory, not experience. People hate hypocrisy. They want to learn or buy or engage or do business with people who they feel they can relate to someone who has been where they've been and can empathize. So how do we make sure that we're not falling into this trap of just being all talk? Well, first we learn from Ezra the importance of seek, do, and teach. So Ezra chapter seven, verse 10 tells us, for Ezra had set his heart to study the law of the Lord and to do it and to teach his statutes and rules in Israel. So Ezra had this threefold commitment, seek, do, teach. He sought the word of God. He wanted to consume God's law. And then he lived it out and he lived his life in accordance to those laws. And then he went out and taught others. So as leaders, we need to immerse ourselves in whatever industry, market, or world we are playing in. We need to 
live out whatever we are telling other people they should do. We need to live out our principles authentically, and then we need to go out and mentor others. Principle number two, don't drink your own Kool-Aid because pride always comes before the fall. We can look at examples just in the news. Look at Elizabeth Holmes, the whole Theranos debacle. Having belief in yourself can easily become delusional and start hurting other people. That's why I'm so critical of the self-help, self-esteem, you know, love yourself movement is that it often leads to this delusional thinking that harms other people. When people buy into their own hype and their exaggerated stories, they really run the risk of getting trapped by pride. When self deception consumes us, it can be really hard to actually self-reflect and get guidance and handle criticism and correct our course because we're just so caught up in what we think is right. Something we really need to do is stop taking pride in our accomplishments as if we've done it all ourselves. God enables us to achieve anything we're doing. Full stop. Ezra was not afraid to admit his need for help and guidance. He sought wise counsel from others. He recognized that he couldn't accomplish everything on his own. We need to have humility and realize that we cannot realize our full potential just doing it all on our own without any help. And this humility allowed Ezra to make wise decisions and seek the best outcome for his people. And all the while in the book of Ezra, he's constantly giving praise and thanks to God for every accomplishment. In Ezra chapter 7, verse 27 through 28, we see this gratitude. He says, Blessed be the Lord, the God of our fathers, who put such a thing as this into the heart of the king. I took courage for the hand of the Lord, my God, was on me. Okay, so Ezra wasn't saying, wow, I lucked out. The king is giving me this chance to go and build up Jerusalem and preach the word of God. He knew that God changed the heart of the king. So the next time a door opens for you or somebody gives you an opportunity, stop and thank God for that moment because it's very easy to fall into like, oh, well, that was just, you know, a lucky break. No, God opened that door, change that person's heart, convince that customer to do business with you. The next principle is trusting God as your provider. This has been so, so hard for me. This this is like the final boss on my spiritual journey of what I need to overcome. Throughout my life, and I've explained this in detail in my testimony video of how I came to faith, I have historically looked to relationships and status and jobs and income and revenue and all of these external circumstances and worldly things for my sense of security. And I am in a season right now where I am fully surrendering and allowing God to be my provider, trusting that he will make it work out financially. In my opinion and how I'm looking at the situation, is that I've gotten to a certain point on my own strength, but I don't think I'm ever going to break through my plateau in business unless I truly surrender this to God and let him do something in me that I would only know is through him. Like something so amazing and a breakthrough so big that I know, wow, that had to be him. That's truly what I believe. And in the book of Ezra, he chooses not to seek military aid on his journey to Jerusalem. So he knew that was going to be a super dangerous trek to go to Jerusalem, but he chose God's glory over his own safety. In Ezra chapter 8 verses 21 through 23, he proclaims a fast to humble themselves before God and seek God's protection rather than relying on soldiers. So the king was like, hey, here's some like bodyguards. I'm going to protect you so that you guys don't get robbed and killed on this trek. And he was like, no, no, no. I'm going to humble myself before God by fasting, making myself completely weak and vulnerable. And then I'm going to trust God to actually go and guide me safely to Jerusalem because I believe so strongly that he will protect me. So for years, every time I would make an investment in my business or take a risk or, you know, go to leave my nine to five job to become a freelancer, I literally would look at the number in my bank account and say, okay, I have this much saved. So if something goes wrong, I could pay my bills for three to four months. I mean, this is like such an ingrained habit of like, okay, I can't do this unless I see the number in my bank account as that certain exact safety net number. And now I'm going to stop doing that because it's a false sense of security. The next principle is effective recruitment. This is so key for those of us who are marketing ourselves or selling anything. So when Ezra knew he was journeying to Jerusalem, he kind of put it out there to the Levites, which are basically like priests and no one showed up. So after that happened, instead of just giving up and saying, well, oh, no one wanted to come. So let's just forget it. He went back and said, well, I need to come up with a plan to persuade them. This shows that we actually do have to be proactive and be intentional about recruiting people, whether it's employees, whether it's customers, whether it's followers, we have to be persuasive. We can't assume people are naturally going to support our vision or just know that we're the right ones to do business with or give a chance to. We need to communicate, persuade, and sometimes recruit actively. And the biggest trap that I've fallen into is thinking, well, oh, if somebody wanted you know, me to write for them, they'll just reach out to me. We can't have that attitude. We can't be passive. It does take 
planning and recruitment and selling. And this is really key. We need to balance having faith, but also being proactive and practical. We need to be planners. As we're balanced having God's hand on his plans with practical planning and execution, he prayed for God's favor, but also meticulously planned the journey and this rebuilding process. So I'm a big planner. I like to take every precaution into account. Like I'm on top of every detail. And I began to wonder as I deepened my faith is being too much in control and trying to control the outcomes. Is that proving that I don't really trust God to make this happen? And when I read this passage, I realized that it's a balance of doing the necessary work and planning, but also trusting that God is leading the way. And also throughout the Bible, there are so many examples of God calling people to step into their divine purpose, but catching them while they were hard at work doing their daily tasks. That's why we never should be idle in business and just assume things are gonna come to us. We have to be hard at work. We have to be diligently working for God to use us. David was faithfully performing his duties as a shepherd when God chose him for a much greater purpose. God calls people when they are diligently working in their everyday responsibilities. Being a shepherd during that time and working with the animals was not glamorous, was not a high status situation. There were so many people that seemed way more qualified than David, but God chose him. Now, something that I have learned from years of coaching and mentoring freelance writers achieve their goal of self-employment is that you can have all of the information in the world. You can have the roadmap in front of you and know the exact steps to take. But if you don't have the right mindset and you don't believe it's possible for you, it will never work. In my next video, I'm going to be diving deep into mindset. There will be mental attacks coming at you the minute you decide to step out in faith and build your business. How do I identify Satan's attacks on your mind, identify them as lies so that you can rebuke them, fight back against them, and keep going. Don't miss that video. See ya.